uh, hi everyone, it's uh, architectural discussions meeting. So we have several topics today. I, uh, first one is declarative schema. Uh, the proposal is to add on update operation for constraints. Uh, I don't see Igor on the call. We'll provide it, uh, the topic. Maybe let's move to the next one for now. Another one uh, is from me. Let me share the screen. Uh, so it is about database information schema, uh, specifically columns and tables. Um, mm -hmm. So just wanted to go through some interfaces that are proposed. So information schema basically allows you to read uh, metadata about tables, columns, and other entities in database. So uh, here I'm describing interfaces to tables, tables and columns. Um, so what, what is proposed is to have separate uh, uh, separate class actually for uh, for entities. So we have class for table, which includes schema name, engine, command, collation, and char set. And um, let's see. Yeah, we have information schema extra. Don't remember when I was adding it, but we have it here. Uh, let's discuss. Then we have column uh, and uh, also some specific classes for each type of column. The proposal is to, to have a, a class which is just a data object uh, for each type that we want to support. Right now it's uh, uh, like it's just an example and we'll need to go through all the types and uh, add uh, all the types that we want to support. As you can see, there are some uh, some getters that are uh, supported for all types of columns, and then uh, uh, the child classes, uh, child data objects, um, provide more specific uh, information about column. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have column. Uh, provider inter interface, which uh, basically gets a uh, list of columns uh, if you provide table name and connection name. And similar uh, thing for table provider interface. Uh, any concerns so far? Uh, no concerns uh, on the one question. Can connection name be optional? Uh, I don't know if you want it to be optional. Do you want it to be optional? In this case, we will be able to fall back to default connection. Mm, yes. Um, But uh, the question is if you want to have it optional. And uh, like why I'm asking because from one uh, from one side it will simplify client code. From another side it may cause issues when people just uh, forget that there is connection name. Uh, parameter and they will not just they will just omit it. That's what already happening in Magento in in, case, in places where you can skip connection as an argument. Sometimes people do that and then we have bugs because default connection was used. Many. Other opinions? Uh, Any other questions? Uh, maybe one more and one uh, also regarding connection. 
can we configure uh, configure this object, uh, this connection to? Okay, uh, set it maybe explicitly, but uh, do not uh, uh, use this. Uh, do not use it uh, in in a code like constructor argument for for your columns class, which will receive a connection name. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I actually have that question already. I'm thinking now that then it will mean that this uh, uh, this class will not be really as a service class because you'll have to create multiple classes. So like a class per connect, not class, an object per connection, right? Maybe it's fine. We will not expect to have a, a significant number of such classes. But it will complicate the code, like how exactly you are going to inject it in places where you need it. <clears throat> Actually, I believe that uh, uh, in case we always will have to specify one more argument uh, for for metadata calls, it will be more visible complication. But this is just my personal opinion. Yeah, so, okay, I have this question and I'm still have, I still have it here, I didn't address it. So let me, yeah, probably write down some examples of client code and then we'll see. I think it's better to keep it in, in the method explicitly um, but let me write everything down and we can discuss item by item. Any other questions to this part? Okay, I assume no questions. So then another uh, significant change, I think, is such thing as profile that we want to introduce. So basically why we are doing while we are introducing all those classes and interfaces is because different uh, database engines, uh, not engines, but different databases um, have, like they provide uh, different implementation uh, for, uh, for metadata. So even already right now we have different results uh, from different versions of MariaDB. Uh, for example, and we need to uh, solve it with different implementations on the PHP side. So like we get information from database and then we parse it differently. So how we want to solve it is uh, first is that we are breaking down, we provide this small interfaces like one separate for columns, one separate interface for table, information and so and then we can have <clears throat> specific implementations if there are any differences in different databases. Um, <clears throat> so we pro propose to introduce different uh, profiles uh, which would be vendor and version and uh, so we can declare them in uh, di xml or we may have a separate configuration and uh, on high level uh, the schema will maybe look something like this so there will be information schema profiles uh, name of the profile and different providers configured here so for example we may have different profiles configured uh, we may have also some of the profiles uh, used in, uh, not profiles, but the, some of the implementations being used in multiple profiles if they don't change, for example, between versions. It may be even possible to use the uh, same implementation in different databases if they work in the same way. So we configure it in this way, and I also propose to have uh, this default, default profile declared. It can change with um, different uh, Magento versions, probably so as we move on, we can update it to, uh, to the version that we support. Uh, so those are declarations of different profiles that we support, and then uh, <clears throat> the idea is that during installation, Magento installation, uh, Magento tries to um, 
determine which uh, database is used uh, for specific connections. So it happens per each connection that is uh, specified by the user. And we try to figure out which profile we can use for this. Um, also, um, also, it should be possible for uh, for a user to specify a profile in case uh, uh, we, we determine it incorrectly or maybe we just cannot determine it. So if you cannot determine it, we fall back to default profile. But if there is profile specified by the user, then we just use that one. Uh, profile will be stored in env.php together with each connection. So after Magenta is installed, we know which profile should be used for each connection. And uh, I believe we can use uh, the model field that we use right now in the, uh, in the connection configuration, which is MySQL 4 right now. And then instead, we can uh, specify normal profile names that make sense because like MySQL 4 is just something, some information that is repeated everywhere. Um, any thoughts about this approach? Maybe it was not very clear, so feel free to ask questions. If no oh, it's good. questions, it's for me. you can yeah feel free to review it. Uh, in your when you have time, it's still here, so I will update the uh, question about connection name. And uh, my big question is whether this uh, part about profiles can affect anybody. So, is it possible to introduce it in 2.3, or it may affect somebody and we need to wait till 2.4 with, uh, with this approach? So it should not theoretically affect people, but uh, I don't know if somebody can, for example, read uh, env.php directly and somehow rely on this model that is uh, specified there as MySQL 4. Maybe we should just use different different field then. Um, yeah, so that's that's mostly all. There are some in, some links here. Um, some alternative approaches about different adopters, but yeah, the idea is that we don't update the adopter itself, but uh, we have something on top of adopters to get the metadata. Yeah, that's all for my topic. Uh, who is next? Let me see. Uh, yeah, we still don't have Igor. Let's go through other topics, and if we still have time, we can go back to uh, an update question. Uh, let's move to Alex topics. Hello. So today I'm going to cover a couple GraphQL schemas, which we are planning to add soon. One of them is for product comparison. It is pretty simple schema, and it follows the same patterns that we have for cart, for shopping cart. For guests, we will have to create compare list, and basically we will use this ID as identifier of um, compare list, and we can work with it after that. For customer, we will query existing compare list, and this operation should work the same as card. If compare list doesn't exist yet, a new one will be created and returned to, to a customer. If there is compare list already, um, it will be, uh, yeah, so it will be returned. And at the moment, we will have add product compare list and a list of SQs to be added. And in, in response, you get uh, output, which is um, just a wrapper with field called compare list, and then each item 
um, is contains compare list ID and a list of or like array of products product interfaces um, and you can also request compare list by uh, compare list ID so what I'm looking at right now probably we also need to have um, remove from compare list because for guests it is easy to generate a new one but for customer it looks like it is not possible so uh, most likely we'll have to add one more uh, mutation to remove items or clear compare list but so far we have um, these operations so any so questions those are existing operations or no this this is all new nothing was yeah okay so one question that i have um uh, so for customer how customer creates compare list is it just to get compare list get yeah so customer, customer will only use this one it? Yeah, it will create if it's no, if it doesn't exist for customer it and yeah. it, it looks confu confusing like this mutation there is this mutation create compare list it will be like accessible to logged in customers right i suppose we will just throw error as we plan to do in cart mm -hmm. why do we have different workflows like just looks uh, really confusing. Yeah, like so basically, it. if we, for example, follow this approach for customer, mm -hmm. then uh, device, device sharing will not work. So if customer starts his compare list mm -hmm. on, say, laptop and continues on mobile device, mm -hmm. he will have to start from scratch. Uh, this approach yeah. allows sharing between devices. Okay, and if we will just have this get customer compare list, it will be bad because it creates, but I, I assume get customer compare list creates the list anyways, right? For it will create if it doesn't exist. Why we can use the same the same thing for guests instead of create compare list? I don't know. Semantics is different here. At least to yeah, me, it seems it seems more clear than you have when you have separate ones. But I mean, get customer compare list creates the list. Not always. Like if it exists, it will not create it. So basically, mm -hmm. it will provide existing customer with his compare list, and if it was already created and pre-populated previously, then he yeah, will get ID of the same compare list. And this one will always mm -hmm. create a new one. Yes, I don't know. It's confusing. If I'm, if I would be developing, uh, if I would be developing some uh, application for logged in customer, I wouldn't know which uh, method I should choose. Okay, so one, <laughs> so one of the options is just to remove this compare list and say that mm -hmm. there is no way to share compare this between devices and mm -hmm. you always create a new one mm -hmm. if, you, if you need to work with it. Mm -hmm. It may be also acceptable, but we need, we need Nishan to, mm -hmm. yeah, we need Nishan to approve this. Because mm -hmm. this came was created with Nishan as well. Um, yeah, if you can leave comments, um, I believe okay. that one is also acceptable. It should be acceptable. Because for cart it doesn't work. Uh, as card should be definitely shared between devices and for compare list maybe it is not as critical mm -hmm. okay and uh, add products and product compare list uh, are both available to guests and customers yes right? yes because they state. work with compare list state, yeah mm -hmm. okay another concern that they have is that uh, as a customer you need to do two queries in order to get product compare list. First you need to do get customer compare list and only then we can do product compare list. That's correct, but it is the same issue with unification of flow. Uh, we can do two separate flows, but uh, in this case, client side developer will have to uh, use different approach for working with uh, and basically, validation will, will be also less strict if you do that. 
Because for guest compare list ID is always required for customer, we can make it optional, but then we'll have to move more logic to um, uh, resolver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then why do you need uh, compare list ID and product compare list itself? Oh, actually. This couple of questions. I let comments. Okay. And second item is about product reviews. So uh, first of all, I'm sorry. First of all, reviews field is added to customer. So if you are in customer account, you can fetch reviews for, for your account. And this field reviews will have pagination, basic pagination saying page size and required page ID. And in response, you will get product reviews object, which contains items and pagination information. So items are individual product reviews, array of individual product reviews. And let me find that product review. So this is individual product review. It contains reference to product being reviewed. It contains a review summary or title. Uh, the actual review content or review text, customer's nickname, and it will default to customer name if he is logged in, then created ad, average rating, rating is those stars which you can see on reviews, and average rating means uh, average between, so you, you can probably remember that we can, we have feature which allows you to rate product on different parameters, let's say price uh, or quality or something like that. So you can have multiple ratings for single review and this average rating is just calculation, like average between all those different types of ratings for specific review. And then we have ratings breakdown, which is exactly um, those different kinds of reviews. So review rating it con contains name of the review, let's say quality price, and the actual selected value. So value is configured, but uh, it, it is actually configured in the main panel and I believe it can be set to uh, some strings eventually, but they, they will be mapped via some IDs. That's why it is integer. So the simplest case is when it maps to one to five rating. So you will get the quality rating three and then price ID of the values, let's, let's say five. Let's go back. We also have page info. Uh, page info is defined, I believe, somewhere in the framework. It gives you a current page, page size, and total count. So this should be enough to render pagination. Additionally, if you look at, so that, that's it for customer account. So now if you look at product interface, we are going to extend product interface as well to be able to display average review rating for the product. So this is star rating on top of the page. Usually it is displayed in Luma, it is displayed um, not far from product title and description. So it's like in the main section. Uh, as well as review count. So average review rating and review counts are displayed somewhere um, in main section of the product. And then we have 
again reviews which usually displayed in sep separate tab or separate section and it has the same structure as customer review so it has filtration capabilities by page size current page and returns identical structure as we have already discussed so now let's move on we also need to be able to fetch review rating metadata and this is um, like a list of available ratings so you can have again this quality price and something else so you need to know what specific ratings are configured in Magento and how to display them so this allows you to render um, review rating form for the user when user is leaving a comment like you, you can render necessary uh, ratings available so each rating will contain ID will contain name of the rating and possible values possible values will have again ID and they will have uh, like label or basically display whatever it should be displayed for this specific rating like <clears throat> like good perfect three four five etc and there will be one mutation create product review it requires create product review input product review input contains product SKU user nickname which is uh, which should be taken from customer uh, so it says defaults to customer name if logged in but I believe uh, for now what we agreed and probably we need to remove the description because it is not accurate because it's not uh, it's not knowable but what we agreed that client app client's application should be able to fetch customer name and insert it here then we have preview title or summary uh, review text and selected ratings selected ratings contain rating ID and value ID and probably that's it and output of the mutation is a wrapper around single product review and this is done as usual for extensibility in case some extension would like to add additional fields to um, to this mutation response any questions a lot of information uh, can you scroll up a little bit to uh, like querying reviews uh, so I can just reiterate what use cases mm -hmm. are going to be supported first of all you need to render product page and for product page you need um, like metadata yes uh, I just wanted to ask or maybe to clarify so there is this int uh, can you scroll down there was this like one to five for the rating mm, yes uh, value int is it uh, does it correspond to the position in the metadata about the rating because metadata includes ID which is string and name or something like that which is also a string like good bad one three so, so what is this int is it the, position no no position is position should be generated on server side so there is position for rating in the admin panel and you can choose like say if price should go first or quality should go first and as usual in GraphQL we rely on server side sorting so this will not be available to to change from the storefront and instead we will take this setting from admin panel sort it on server side and return it sorted already so this value is actually so I just wanna I don't want to show you the database but basically if you have two different ratings let's say price and quality they can have 
values, let's say one through five. Oh. Each of those values yeah, sure. uh, will Great. have a different ID in database. So if this is option for one rating and it's like five star for quality, will have different ID in database than five star for price. So this ID, value ID, is exactly um, that option value ID, or like review rating ID. Okay. So okay. this is basically generated, so this is given to you by, um, by metadata service, and what the user should do, they should just look, let me see, let me find that metadata, so which, they should just look at metadata and render it as is. And so this is like value ID. And, and then when form is submitted, uh, correct value will be submitted here. Okay. I don't know if, it, if it's anywhere clear, but. So user should not generate this field. So does it make sense for me to go over supported use cases again, like quickly? Like rent, so basically, uh, proposed schema will allow to render product page, display average uh, product rate, and display review count. And additionally, you'll be able to render review submission form and provide um, all available ratings for input. After user submits review, he can select obviously like rating, he can submit text, and after that review will be displayed on product page. Like, array of reviews will be displayed on product page. Additionally, customer can go to his account and view all reviews that he left for all products. So that, that these are use cases that are gonna be supported. Any other questions? No questions. Uh, maybe one. Uh, do we support only one range scale so one to five? No, it is customizable and so this is rating like option ID or I'm not sure how to call it, we call it value, but it's basically one of the options. It is also possible that um, rating will have multiple, like m more than five options or less than five options. Yeah. I'm not sure we have UI for configuring that in a panel, but we support it on database level and potentially some customizations can um, can use it. I, I agree with this. Uh, does it make sense to change this statement? Possible values? Uh from one to five? It's actually not one to five. It's uh, ID. Ah, ID for I see, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's ID from database, so it can be, yeah. Uh, yeah, as I said, let's say for quality, it can be five, for price, it can be like nine, the actual ID, but the label will be five in both cases, like name will be five. Maybe it makes sense to make it string instead of ID, in case we want to change it for UI ID in the future. Yeah, please leave your comment and uh, we will we'll discuss it. Okay. Yeah, and I would also like to mention that this schema was created uh, with Anton Kapler and Nishant. Um, so Anton is actually architect for this functionality, but he was out, that's why we started without him and then completed with, with Anton. So if no questions, I suppose that's it. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all for today then. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I lost my headset, so...
some can questions just, if you have questions. Yeah, can we discuss this for update uh, proposal? Which one? Uh, for update. You mentioned that we, can, we should skip it. No? Or do you want to discuss it? You mentioned that we should reject it. No? In yeah, chat. just... Yeah, if, if we don't have any votes for supported level, let's reject it. So do you want to go through it right now, or you just think that we can do it offline? Okay, we can do it offline. Okay, then I guess that's all for today. And thanks for joining. See you next time. Bye.